we're going to look at creating a secondary color here. So in this case, um, I'm going to start with red at one end, and don't worry about that little splotch right there. This is basically, when you're doing this, all I want to see is that you've been um, practicing. Some red paint on this end, and on the other end we're going to add some yellow. And the yellow and the red need to mix to create orange. And you're going to, I'm going to have you go through this with every um, secondary color because the mixing of the paint is one of the processes that can be the most challenging to figure out as far as paint manipulation, how much water to add, how quickly you need to move, and all of those things. Um, and so you're going, I'm going to have you mix, practice mixing your primary and your secondary, the primary to make all of your secondary colors, and then um, on your color wheel you'll actually put that to work with creating the tertiary. So, in this case, we now have your secondary color that goes from primary to secondary. And next we're going to go over how to create a grayscale that'll take us from... Alright, so we're going to take black on one end. We're creating a grayscale here. And we want to take black on one end. And... We are going to have white on the other. And in your grayscale, as with the monochromatic painting, you're going to want to transition from one end of the spectrum to the other. And so we have a mid-range here, and we want to just get this black to transition smoothly. Um, you want to make sure you actually have enough white to help that transition along. And as with before, have enough water in your bristles to keep the paint fluid. That's a pretty smooth transition from white into our black, and that'll give us a grayscale that goes all the way from one to the other. Then we're going to go over um, painting techniques and the color wheel, and I want you to um, work on actually getting all of your colors in that color wheel. Um, as far as the color wheel goes, um, you are not going to be allowed to use um, secondary colors out of the tube. I want you to mix your secondary colors because all that color mixing practice is going to help you learn how to move that paint more efficiently in the long run. So you'll begin by getting your primary colors down. You'll see I have my blue over here, and try to stay in the lines um, when you're doing these practice charts, but you don't exactly have to um, be perfect with it. Goodness knows I'm not. Just do the best you can.
So we're working on creating secondary colors. I have my yellow and I have my blue and I have two separate paintbrushes for these two colors. And once again, that's to help with mixing to keep things from getting too messy. It's okay if you see some of your pencil lines through this. These are just practice um, samples that I'm going to have you do. So you want to bring that blue, just like we started to do on the scale processes, you're going to bring the colors into each other. Um, and you've got pretty full brushes with quite a bit of color on them so that you have enough color to give you that um, pigment to do the mixing as you need to. Now I think that green is not too shabby, but I want to add a little bit more blue to it to make it a little bit more of a pure green. Now keep in mind we're not mixing tertiary right now, we're just doing the secondary. Okay, so um, I've got my secondary of those two handled and now I'm going to rinse my brush off, get some more yellow paint and we're going to go ahead and do our next color which will be orange So I've got my yellow and I'm going to get some red over here. Um, don't pay too much attention to the labels that I have on my chart because obviously the um, wedges aren't quite right and so I'm just getting that color down to where it's basically I'm just eyeballing it to make sure it's pretty close to accurate. It doesn't have to be straight on the money. So now I'm going to start bringing this yellow over as I did with the green. And then I'm going to start bringing my red over. Now you want to be real careful between that yellow and that red, just like you had to be real careful between the, green, the um, blue and the yellow because that blue is so much darker than the yellow that it's not going to take a whole lot to overpower it completely. So in this case I'm adding a little bit more yellow just because my brush was starting to dry out and I don't want to don't want to blend that um, that yellow too far over. So now you see we're creating that orange secondary color. And all we have left is the purple. So I'm going to take some of that red and move over towards the blue. And Add a little bit of water to make sure that it doesn't dry out too much on me. Red and blue are pretty close as far as the to, uh, as far as the uh, hue goes in terms of the depth of the hue. So you really don't need to worry about the one color overpowering the other. And in this case, you'll see I'm actually mixing right on the surface. Um, I think that's a good habit to get into as far as mixing goes. If you pre-mix your color on your palette, you do have more control, but that also teaches you to rely on the pigment um, being exactly the same every single time, as opposed to correcting any inconsistencies on the painting itself. So if you can get in the habit of mixing on the painting, it's definitely gonna make things easier for you in the long run. So then we have a basic color wheel with um, the sample colors going from red and blue and yellow and mixing all of those to create our secondary colors.